Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be looking at five take a lot automations that you have to know. I'm Andy, I do business tips and tricks to help you grow your business. So if you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. What you'll need to know today regarding automations is that Takealot doesn't have native automations built within the seller platform. You'll have to use a third party application, which in my case, I like to use make.com, uh, previously known as Integramat, and I use that for the automations within my own systems. So what you need to do is sign up for make, uh, use my link below, it does help support the channel and appreciate make for sponsoring this video. P.S. If you've never used Make or Integramat before, I would recommend watching Max's playlist on how to use Integramat. It is really good and it'll help you get started. Right, automations within Takelot. So what you can do with automations is basically you'll be able to connect Takelot to your e-commerce platform, say Shopify or WooCommerce. And what you'll need to do is connect that, uh, connect the two and then grab the information of Takealot and then send it somewhere. So we're gonna use make.com for that and we'll be able to do a couple of things with uh, Takealot's API, let me show you. So just having a look here on Takealot Seller API, uh, there's get offers, get offer, get an offer, update an offer, create a batch, so view sales. These are all the things that you can do with Takealot's API if you know how to use it. What we're gonna do here is I'm in make.com and we're going to look for something called a uh, basic trigger. And I'm also gonna look for something, you'll have to find it here, it's gonna be called HTTP. And if it's not there, it's probably because you've already used it and we're gonna make a request. So just see how I connect those two over there. And within the bundles, I'm gonna create one here and I'm gonna call it key. And this is where you're gonna go key, and then you're gonna go to the seller portal. You're gonna grab this URL, mine's hidden for my own security, and you're going to paste it in, you're gonna go key, space, and then you're gonna paste it in over there. Once you've done that, then this next module, we'll be tweaking all the details here on an individual basis. So if you've got that far, then you'll be fine with what's up to come. Okay, so getting rid of that, I've got a couple set up here. Oh, by the way, so I'm going to show you five, and the fifth one that I'm going to show you isn't even on this API page for Takelot. It's completely hidden, and I found out about it through a friend of a friend, so it'll be a nice trick uh, for a lot of you out there. The first one I want to show you is how to get an offer of Takelot. You can see here I've got my key uh, set up like this. I added an extra field called name and value uh, because in this case we need the SKU to be able to get the offer from your uh, offers. So then I'm going to call this uh, just get offer. It's a get request. Here's the URL, HTTP, seller API, blah, 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 offers, offer, and then SKU, and then I insert the SKU here. So if I just put my mouse here, I can see here either the key or the SKU is available over here. I'm just going to put in the SKU. You could swap that for barcode, you could swap it for a few other things, which is all those details are on the API page. But in this case, I'm just gonna use SKU. Then down here, you've gotta give a header, you call the first one authorization, and then in the bottom, you can just add the key over there. All you need to do now is go to your SKU, uh, go to your trigger, and then select, uh, paste in your SKU, and then select okay. Uh, you just have to grab this thing. Yours will be by default on here if you've created it. And just copy all of these settings and copy all of these settings. And then when I run the module, it's going to pop it out over here. You can see a bunch of details that came back. And here's the data. So you can see it is a UPS. The price is 2000. There is no stock on the way. There's no stock cover. There's no stock at take a lot. And that's as simple as that. So you guys may be thinking now, hmm, what am I gonna do with that? So what you can do is just for example, down here are some things that I've added in is WooCommerce, Shopify, Deer Inventory, Vend Inventory. Those are all really popular systems that you guys are probably running your take lot stores on and you are able to then connect it to WooCommerce. So, for instance, uh, you may want to look at my other video about Takelot webhooks and then you can get a trigger and then you can maybe get that offer from Takelot and then you can connect it to WooCommerce and have a system like that. Or you can have WooCommerce first. If there's an order on your website, then you can get the offer from Takelot and make sure that you have 
uh, you can update your inventory on on take a lot for instance uh, the the possibilities are endless okay anyway next one up is get offers so again we've just got in this case we just need key and then your your own key put over there in this case it's a get again and then a URL is just going to be v2 forward slash offers authorization and key but now we also need to add some query strings, page size at value one and page number value one as well. So what's happening here is we're going to trigger it manually. It's going to get the first page, but then within the first page, it's going to tell me how many pages I have because we have to actually get multiple pages of data. Uh, and then what I've got here is the repeater. So it's going to bring in one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, pages. Uh, so total results divided by 100 because it can only bring 100 pages per result. Uh, plus one because if it's I've, I've got the floor over here so if it's 700 then it's going to bring in 800 there's probably a better way of doing that uh, and then increments of one then it's going to run that same module again uh, blah 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 offers authorization the key page size except here in the page number I'm going to put in this value which is coming from the flow control which is the repeater and that's going to come down here into value uh, once we're happy with that Here's any other settings, just as an FYI, uh, but I think mostly it's all default. You just want to move that so we're running this module now, and then we can run that once. So it's bringing in, it's brought back seven pages of offers, and over here, if we open this up, Over here, I've just come back to that same offer result. Uh, it's a, There's the UPS, you can see all the date details. But from here, you can have all your offers and all the current prices and all the stock on hand and all the stock on the way, and you can aggregate that into a spreadsheet or into your inventory system or something like that. So the possibilities with this are also really, really powerful. Next up is get sales for a range. This is if you wanna get your sales data. Just going to slide that over there for this we don't need anything more than the key uh, again um, here is the uh, filters um, or here is the url it is seller api forward slash v2 sales and then i've got filters and then start date obviously you guys can amend this and end date amend that as to your liking page limit is 100 anyway and page number is one as well so we may have to do another repeater in this case but i haven't got it on here but you guys may have to do that. Um, so what we need here is it's get authorization key, page size 100 and page number 100. So if you guys don't see this, by the way, just go to query string and item and then add in, add it in basically. Uh, also, if I, if you use my link below, uh, you guys get a access to the pro plan, which it gets you 10,000 operations for your first month as opposed to the first 1,000. So you're basically getting almost a year's worth of uh, operations to play around with. So hopefully that helps you guys. So once you've got those details, uh, we can then run. And then over here, you'll be able to see all of the sales data within that date. And you can see over here, it has got the SKU, the status, the date, the order ID, or the order ID, the amount, everything like that, your customer name, which is also something that you don't get access to on the uh, backend dashboard. So all of, those inf all of that information is here, and then you can aggregate that. I think there is a limit on how far back you can go. I think it's six months, and obviously you can only bring in 100 pages at a time, 100 responses per page. Okay, next one is updating an offer. Uh, in this case, we're going to need a few things. Uh, we've got SKU, price, quantity, and so on and so forth. Uh, let's say 100 whoops, uh, is what we're going to put input. And like this data, like this is just called a basic trigger. So like you might be getting data from other places. Like this is a bit boring, but you may have an update in your accounting system that needs to update now take a lot or in Vend or in Deer or whatever you're using, you can just plug those modules in and invoice and then figure out how to connect it to take a lot uh, or have take a lot as the starting point. And then once you've got your sales data, you can send that into take a lot or send that into a spreadsheet or send that into Vend, et cetera. This one's a little bit different. It's gonna be called a, where you have your method, select patch this time, get the same, uh, take the same URL, forward slash SKU, and then we're gonna put the SKU right next to it. 
Um, this could also be, once again, barcode or PLID as far as I know, and you can just get those details. I think you would just go barcode and then put the barcode number. Authorization and key, uh, body type raw, JSON, application forward slash JSON. And then you want to type this out exactly how I've got it over here. You need the SKU and then the SKU. So it's taking these details from whatever I've got here in the basic trigger. But if you have a WooCommerce module first, you'll be able to add in the, the SKU from your WooCommerce module. Once you're happy with that, let's run it. And then you'll see down here in your data, it has now updated the selling price. Cool, last but not least is the one that you aren't able to find anywhere else. Uh, so guys, I am giving out my secrets here, so please make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you are enjoying this, and feel free to subscribe. It does help support the channel or share this video with someone else that may need it. So get transactions, all we need again is the key, then under page, so in this case, it's seller API da 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 v1 seller transactions forward slash forward slash transactions, and what that does is that allows you to get your transaction data, which is like all your fulfillment order fee, success fee, order fee, you know, all those like fees under like the accounting stuff, and like I use that quite a lot for my accounting records, as opposed to going in generating the report by accounting line transactions and then downloading it there. So this isn't public, so I don't know if it'll be around forever, but it has been as long as I have been using the API. Uh, what you'll need to do is have authorization key again, page size 100 and page number. And just like that, uh, we can run this. Going down, you'll see all the transactions. And... Here is a example of the transaction. Uh, you'll see in this case, it's actually a fulfillment fee reversal, which probably means it was a failed delivery or something like that. It's got a lot of the details, transaction type and description. Okay, this is a return of all of them I had to select. Um, so basically this could be super useful in aggregating your costs per order ID. You can bring that all into a spreadsheet and yeah, it's pretty, pretty powerful once you get to know it. So guys, that was take a lot automations, definitely something that you do need to know. It's not that easy yet, but it's nothing that you can't copy off the screen and implement into your own workflows or processes. Literally everything that I've done here, you should be able to copy and paste it and it should work on your side. So just make sure to sign up and give it a go and you have nothing to lose. Till next time, cheers guys.